So, oh. welcome to another Path to Prayer episode. Sorry, it's been a little bit, a little bit of time since the last one with Simon. I've just moved to Spain, so I've been getting everything uh, ready and sorted out. So, sort of only now on the rest day, I had a bit of time to, to sort of set up and film with Red. So, this this video is with Red Waters. Do you want to say hi? Hey guys, thanks for thanks for having me on. And Red this year is riding for CC Plansoa and the Black Cyclist Network, which we'll get into yeah. those teams a little bit later on. So. As normal with the um, with the situation on Path to Pro. So as normal, the normal plan with Path to Pro is just getting into the quick questions at the start. So obviously, I'm doing this as a podcast as well, so I'll read them all out. So firstly, how old are you? Uh, I'm 22, so <laughs> final year under 23 this year. Mega. Uh, how many years have you been cycling? Uh, I think five, five and a half now. Yeah, about five and a half years. Is that five and a half years racing or just riding? No, literally, yeah, five and a half riding. I started just after my GCSEs. Okay, okay. And then, so your first team or club? Uh, that was Setonia, Setonia CC, which is like my local cycling club. Um, and yeah, I stayed with them for like three, three years, I think. Strong. And then from there, you went to Vitus, which is your last team. Is that right? Uh, not quite. So, no Vitus, yeah, no pins was the last one. So, yeah, Vitus was. 2019 and then last year it was no fins is that the elite uh, no pin side of mech isn't it is that the elite team yeah yeah yeah. strong yeah, they're, they're strong they're a strong setup i really like their kit to be fair um, yeah yeah they're good. where in france obviously you're not um in france now but where are you going to be based when you're in france uh so yeah i'll be racing for cc plonqui as it's pronounced which doesn't make any sense when you look at the word but, uh yeah i'll be <laughs> racing in Brittany so yeah that sort of region okay and then so what's your favorite race could be either you know the one like a race to do or a race to watch anything like that uh at some worlds I love watching worlds just because like the stakes are so high yeah. and like it's just a completely different dynamic as well so yeah that's really Such cool a sick race Alaphilippe smashed it last year yeah 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 such a good race to watch and then yeah I'm not gonna lie I kind of wanted about to win but it's cool it's cool <laughs> It is what it is. It is what it is. Yeah. Um, and then, so what's that your most memorable win or cycling experience? It doesn't have to be a win. Um, oh, probably when I won out in Spain in Calpe last year on training camp. I just sort of whimsically entered this um, Volta La Marina race. And like the whole team and a bunch of my mates were out there watching and stuff. And I beat this climber who's now on Movistar, by the way, on his climb. What's his so name? I was pretty like um, Abner Gonzalez. Oh, is that the. Um... Oh, where's he from? Puerto Rican. That's Puerto the Rican. One. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's well strong. Yeah, so, yeah, he is. And it was like up this five minute climb. Do you know? I don't know if you know the climb to Montego. Montego, I think. It's uh, I'm it's not, probably I'm a not, bit uh, far for you. I've not managed to do that yet. No, I, I need to explore a few more of the climbs, to be honest. No, it's, it's a good time. But yeah, no, I won there. And that was like, yeah, that was really cool just because all my mates are there watching strong. and stuff. Right, that and then I guess is Calpe the favorite place to train or what's that? <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, it's the only place I've trained like properly apart from where I live, which is like Hampshire. And yeah. like Hampshire's nice, but Calpe is like you know it's top tier, yeah, like yeah. that's our whole region really. E everyone goes to Calpe, don't they? Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's classic that. And then so I'm moving on to, to your experience really now. And firstly, you know, I wanted to highlight the the Black Cyclist Network that you're a part of. So it's a really good setup. Um, and, you know, I really respect what's going on there. But I don't know loads about it. And I know, I guess, you know, I guess a lot of people do, but I guess there'll be a fair few people who also don't know. Um, you know, how did you come about joining the, the networking team? And, you know, what are the aims of the network? And also, how can people get involved uh, in the network? Is it just on social media or, you know, what's the what's the deal there yeah yeah so i knew the guy who founded it manny arthur i knew him i think i've known him for like a couple of years before he started it um just from i think i think we met at a race in hillingdon but anyway yeah he started that in i want to say 2019 or maybe 2018 um and then so halfway through 2020 last year i left my team for various reasons and i saw and it was also around the time where sort of the black lives matter movement was really getting like a lot of um is getting a lot bigger yeah. and I was like you know what I'm sort of like I guess I had a bit of an epiphany like you know what cycling really is not diverse at all 
yeah, and yeah. seeing what Black Cyclist Network is doing, which is to promote mainly to promote diversity in cycling. I was like, you know, actually, I, I really want to be part of this and help this. So, yeah, I joined those guys. And, yeah, the main, the main thing is just to get more BME riders, and that's back and ethnic minority riders, yeah. just cyclists in general to start cycling because uh, cycling is such an undiverse sport. So, For yeah, sure. that's the main thing. Um, and the main thing, yeah, obviously they're big on social media. They're really big on Zwift at the moment. Uh, that's a new partner they've got on board. And then obviously there's no group rides outdoors. So that's that's the main main thing, social media and Zwift at the moment. Is there, so in the network, is there an aim to like develop people to hire race teams or is it just to just increase the, like purely increase the number of BME cyclists, uh, you know, participating in the sport? Yeah, same same story for like developing racing. So we've got the race squad, uh, which I think there's there's twelve of us, and I'll be racing when I am in the UK. I'll be racing for for the BCN race team, and then we've got the development team, and then that's I think that's essentially us. I can't I don't know exactly how big it is, but that's obviously a, a larger group of riders who the yeah. goal is to get them you know racing more, progressing up to the higher categories, and gaining experience and stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's great. So I'll. I'll definitely link uh, the BCN's Instagram and the other social medias below. And also, uh, is Zwift linked to the, is it the Zwift, is there a Zwift club for them? Um, they oh. mainly just, they mainly post their stuff on the, on the Instagram anyway. Okay. For the, for cool. the, so yeah. I, yeah, I'll definitely link that below. So move, moving on now, really, is that, you know, how did you get into racing as a youth class junior? I presume it was more junior, seeing as you said it was after GCSEs you started. Yeah, well, I actually did. Uh, I did one race as a youth, and it was literally the week after I got my first road bike. Um, and I decided, like, because I'm just motivated by racing, that's like my main motivation. And I did one training session with this other guy who was a youth at the time. And I was like, oh, he's pretty strong. If I can beat him, then like I'll be able to win the race. Yeah. Long story short, I was so wrong. <laughs> like, it was like strong guys. And obviously, having pretty much not done much sport at all up to that point, I was so far off the pace. And then <laughs> because my rear mech hanger or my rear mech the limit screw didn't yeah. go in enough to limit it to a, like a 16 tooth uh, they had to limit me to the little ring on the front ooh. so i was on this like circuit that had a downhill section like spinning out what was it it would have been like the 30 34 11 which is not a big gear at all so uh yeah it's pretty grim oh. so then the next year racing as a junior I started like racing more. To be fair, there wasn't that much junior only racing for me that year. I just sort of did local crits and stuff. Yeah. Um. So what did I do? Yeah, I literally just just ground out like the local. There was like a circuit race and an outdoor velodrome, and I just did that. And I got to second cat in that year. Nice. And then the year after that, that was like oh, that was A levels year. So the first half of the year was that year it was like a write off because I just didn't really train properly. And then I did a few of the national junior series, but yeah, I got spat in those as well. <laughs> so that was fun. Yeah. actually, that's not junior. I got spat in the first one. I got spat in. I was the, just um... Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> oh, I remember I got spat in Cadence Junior Road Race. Yeah. That's um, a... And that. Yeah. And that was when Tom Pidcock won. So I was like, oh, okay, fair enough. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Then, yeah. Um, and then you know how did. Uh, Vitus or Vitus, however you know, want, to, want to pronounce it, how did that come about? And like, what teams did you target to get into? So, like, either Conti teams or elite teams like No Pins? Yeah, yeah. So, halfway through 2018, I sort of like decided like I really want to get on a Conti team for the next year. Yeah. So, basically, I emailed like every continental team. I tried to gather as many contacts as possible. Um, and it's funny, I, I hardly got any responses from anyone. Um, and then I like I was gonna like e Vetus was on my list of teams to email, but I couldn't find the address, the email address anywhere. Yeah. So I just sort of left it for ages. And then I think it must have been pretty late, like September, August, September. Um, I found their email address on the UCI website, uh, and I just sent the email. And then the next day, like or two days later, they're like, "Oh, we've seen the YouTube videos. Uh, we'd like to come up for an interview and stuff." So and then that was how that sort of came about. Nice. Which is pretty cool. cool. And then. The next year, when I didn't have a place on Vita anymore, with no pins, it just sort of, because they're a local team or a localish team, it just came about yeah. through just knowing people and having chats and stuff okay. and Facebook and stuff. And then, you know, how did the, so what was, like, what's the level of, what was the difference between the elite and Connie setups in the UK? You know, was, was there a big one, did you notice, or 
was just like no, like um, just like small little differences. Uh, I think it varies quite a lot because so for example, if when I was in Vitus, I didn't really go to many of the big races of the team, so that was like a very different experience for the most part. Yeah. So if, if it was a big race, you know, you've got the team car, the team bus and everyone, the race bikes, the spare bikes and all that, Swan, yeah, and it's all like really good. But for the most part, I was just like doing local nut bees on my own. Yeah. And in that case, it's pretty much the same thing. You know, you've got a team bike. Um, yeah, there's just, yeah. yeah, there's not a huge amount. I think like England is probably the worst example of the difference between level of team below Conti and two Conti. Yeah. Whereas like you look at France, there's like so many more requirements that Conti teams have to have. So it's a lot, a lot bigger of a difference. It's, it's interesting. Like sometimes the UK scene just seems to be really lagging behind a lot of the other nations. Um, yeah. And then for 2021, you head into CC. I'm going to mess the pronunciation up, so I'll let you say it. It's CC Plonkwe. I think. I, I <laughs> hope I'm not getting that wrong. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. <laughs> Plonkwe. I, I was going to say Plan Start again, which isn't it after hearing you earlier. Um, <laughs> I, I don't even know um so um how did that come about you know and what source what, what sources of information did you use for contacts and then you know how did you really uh, discover the french scene yeah it's funny actually halfway through 2020 i started the uh, well, no, it's, uh, it's literally like february when corona sort of came came about and i was like okay there's probably not gonna be racing for a while that's yeah. when i started my sort of team search and I emailed like more than ever. I have like a spreadsheet with so many teams and contacts. And essentially what I'll do is scour the internet, you know, the ECI website. Um, I think there was a French website. Um, yeah, it was, no, I can't remember which website. I got some emails from another website. Okay. And there was another one where I emailed the race organizer and asked for the details of the teams that he had. And I just got like a bunch of email addresses from that. Um, but yeah, I had like, 200 of the email addresses and I sent off my CV like translated and everything yeah. but the funny thing is like nothing ended up actually coming of that um mm -hmm. there was a couple of Conti teams that nearly happened one Conti team folded um and there's a few other nearly and then the team that I've ended up with actually has come from a contact a guy I know called Mike um and he's sort of been talking to me for the last like two years I think about getting me over to France you know saying how good an opportunity it would be and stuff like that and just for various reasons I haven't gone uh, but this year, yeah, he put me in touch with the team and he's helping me out with a place to stay and stuff. So, yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll be good that. Yeah, no, definitely. Especially because we've got like four British guys in the house. So, and one of them is a guy I already really know really well. So, oh, yeah, so be, are, are all those Brits on your team or are they on different teams? Uh, so three of them are Harry and a guy called Guy. Yeah. Um, they're both on CC Plonkwe. And then... Um, Adam Lewis, who's on the Division One team, which is like the th this club is the um, what's the word the development team, I guess, for um, Coach Denmore, and he's on that team. So hopefully, I can move up to that team at some point during the year. Um, yeah, I'm sure that'll happen. I, I guess it's just a case of getting over to do the races as soon as you can, really. Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. So. so here, like you haven't been to France yet to cover the the massive differences of the French racing scene, which is what. I've discussed with a few of the other riders so instead i want to focus on your you know your networking approach and you know, you've got a lot of personal sponsors like prime and science and sport um you know what, what you know how how did you get these like don't discuss the really specific ins and outs because you know people need to discover that for themselves and you don't want everyone to do exactly the same thing because that doesn't make it like that just makes everyone the same then but you know yeah. what are the vague tips about getting some sponsorship for younger cyclists like ourselves at under 23 um yeah sort of cover that first really yeah i think firstly start with smaller brands like i started i guess getting used to the process of trying to get sponsors like ages ago in 20 i want to say 2017 um when i was you know second year junior with like 300 subscribers or something on my youtube channel yeah and you know just looking at smaller brands like i remember i had one small nutrition sponsor who gave me like a discount for a bit and even if it's just discounts and stuff i guess it's good just to get into the practice of having sponsors and yeah. promoting their stuff i mean don't like mug yourself off i don't think it's worth like getting a 10 percent discount yeah. for something and then still you're still paying for it and it's like okay it's not really to be able to yeah. scam, really like the amount of companies that have like yeah be an ambassador and we'll give you five percent off and it's like <laughs> okay 60 you're just like yeah exactly exactly <laughs> um 
yeah i mean most of the deals like sis and prime both came from contacts like people like for sis came from bcn yeah. and it's all they sponsored bcn and they sort of they wanted to help me out as well okay um and then prime prime was because i knew the guy from when i was on vetus yeah uh, and he sort of we messaged each other and that's how that came about and then i think the other thing so the ones i have i've actually got a new sponsor that i haven't announced yet um which i did actually like go out and find like find the email address and send my whole um presentation but essentially you want to present yourself in the best way possible so i wrote like a little a, i don't know a cv not a cv like a a proposal type thing yeah. of what i can offer with my platform like how many followers i've got what sort of engagements i'm getting um and then just i think it's just really important to show your enthusiasm for the sport i think more than anything because at the end of the day they are giving you stuff or you're, you're asking for them to give you stuff and whether they're, whether they're going to get some sort of marketing return yeah usually it's like they are doing it because they want to help as well yeah. so yeah show your enthusiasm um and then obviously the actual media side it is really important to build your instagram page build youtube if you have that um but i think that's that's my sort of use, unique selling point having my youtube channel which not that many cyclists nor that many cyclists have yeah um yeah yeah so yeah so just you know expanding the social media platforms really and then you know sort of moving on to that, a bit, bit of a smoother transition than originally planned um with the youtube and social media side of it you know what what are your key tips or areas to target when growing like your online presence and like your network capabilities yeah i think mainly which i'm really bad at is consistency <laughs> with uh with youtube videos like there's been periods where i haven't uploaded for like four months or something mm -hmm. and then i'd stall and then i'd upload a few good videos and then it would just go up i think instagram consistency is a bit easier because you know you can just take a picture and upload it yeah, YouTube sure. consistency is a bit harder, but it's really important on YouTube just to get that momentum and then keep it going. Yeah. Like, for example, my last couple of videos, I've done a couple of Zwift videos, which have done really well. I don't understand why Zwift videos do really well on YouTube, but they do. It's ridiculous. Um, so I just, I just like, I need to make it, sure. Bro. Literally, you do, honestly, just like put, I don't know, 2000 watts in the thumbnail and people <laughs> can literally get loads of clips. I can't even count to 2000. <laughs> let them reach it <laughs> no i can't i just did like i made this meme thing for 2000 watts and it just yeah it got so many views oh, I that, I that. so yeah so consistency is your main tip then yeah yeah definitely and then i guess just like trying to be entertaining and like think of the videos assuming it's videos think of it as like think of it as a person watching as opposed to just editing it and uploading it yeah, yeah. And I think just instead of just being a bit of like a flat video, try and like my thing is I try and add loads of interesting elements. Okay. That's that. Yeah. I rate that. I need, I think I need to work on editing a bit. I've, I've got no idea how to do it. So I definitely need to research some of those aspects a bit more. Um, you know, so this is sort of the end of the slide. It's, it's been a bit of a quicker video, really. But is there anything that you want to add in terms of? tips or you know anything like that really any information sort of about racing or networking or anything really that we've covered um yeah i guess i oh, know one i guess slightly random tip is just like with races and stuff i think people should always hit like race the hardest race you can race like the amount of times you see people like you know for example if you could pick the option between e123 and like a 34 if you're a third cat for example yeah. pick the e123 um and just like do hard races i always find the best way to improve is just to like challenge yourself to the absolute yeah, maximum for sure like i did i did um london 6a under 21s in my first year of racing and i got like absolutely battered i think we lost like yeah. 21 laps or something um but it's just like such a good way to improve and learn quickly yeah mega uh, yeah I, I i mean i would definitely recommend that unfortunately last year I didn't really have the chance to to chuck myself into, into the deep end too much but yeah, yeah. I, mean, I know this year got some of the spanish cup races which are you know there's riders who've done the water and the x pros in there which will be a massive difference so you know always trying to do those harder races to or it's just important to like make sure that you progress and then in those races you've got like a like a set benchmark of where you need to be if you're not there already i think like it's quite yeah a visible thing yeah yeah exactly exactly for sure so yeah is anything else you want to add really uh no not not i can think of 
Mago, so um, it'd be good to catch up later in the year and do like a bit of an update. Uh, one like once over in France. Fingers crossed. I'm not saying if, I'm saying once, because you've got to say positive for that. Yeah, 100%, 100%. Yeah, so, yeah, so I guess at the end of the year, it'd be good to catch up, uh, see I mean, how you've been doing, you know, how your season went, and then, you know, any tips that you've gained from racing in France is not part of a DN setup, but as part of the feeder setup, and then that difference from the feed setup to the DN setup uh, when that happens. Yeah, yeah, that'd be awesome, definitely. For sure. That sounds great. Well, uh, thanks for joining me, mate. I'll stick all your uh, links, YouTube links, all, you know, all the normal stuff down below. And, uh, and I'm sure we'll catch up again later on. Awesome. Thanks. Cheers for having me on.